The character Christian Bale plays in American Psycho is one messed up guy and not a very good lover. He only thinks of himself and in the bedroom, your focus should be on pleasing your partner. But outside the bedroom and in life, you need to think of yourself and your health and fitness to have the most amazing sex possible. Because great sex is truly an athletic endeavor. Sometimes you gotta sweat. That's why we're going to look at the best cardio exercises we can do to improve our sex life. Studies have shown cardio to be effective in keeping our bone in the zone and it can improve our endurance for longer lasting, more satisfying treat between the sheets. So far in this series, we've talked mainly about exercises which strengthen the pelvic floor and improve blood flow to the region. Good blood flow starts with the heart, and any activity that enhances the function of the heart is going to improve your performance in the bedroom. We're going to look at four different types of cardio and see how they stack up when it comes to improving heart health and curing ED. Based on a meta-analysis done in 2018 in which all the test subjects did some form of cardio, including three of the ones we'll be looking at, resulted in all of them experiencing improved erectile function. I've mentioned this paper before because it gives us a goal to work towards. It recommends moderate to vigorous intensity exercise four times a week for 40 minutes, totaling 160 minutes every week. You might think that's a lot, and depending on the shape you're in, it might be. We need to slowly and gradually build up our endurance, which brings me to the first form of cardio and one I like to do, running and it's less intense form, walking. Something most of us can do, and it's a straightforward way to start. Running is good for the heart, and like most forms of cardio, it lowers your resting heart rate, improves oxygen intake, and delivers a large amount of blood to the body with every beat. What about these people you hear having heart attacks while out jogging? First, I'd like to emphasize if you haven't exercised in a long time, or are new to exercise, you should consult your doctor before starting any exercise program. This is one of those cases where we need to look at the big picture. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee against having a heart attack. What we should look at is what are the odds? Are they greater or lesser having a heart attack if we're a runner? They did a study of 538 members of a running club that were 50 years or older and compared them to a group of non-runners over 21 years. At the 19 year mark, when the participants were now 69 years or older, 15% of the runners had died compared to 34% of the non-runners. Now that's significant. If there were the same number of people in both groups, the non-runners would have had over double the deaths. This study wasn't heart attack specific, but it does show overall mortality is much lower as a runner. If you're looking for a program to help you build your running endurance, I recommend the app Couch to 5K. I used this app when I first started running and it's a great way to gradually increase your running time and distance right up until you can run a 5k race. Next is cycling and it has one big area of concern when it comes to sexual performance. Now I enjoy cycling and it's something I do more for fun than a workout. The concern is with the seat and how it puts pressure on the perineum. That's the area between your butthole and your main member. This area is filled with arteries and nerves that supply blood and sensation to the penis and gets us up, ready for action. The issue usually happens when you ride a lot and for a long time. Now I've never experienced it, and I have a seat with a lowered or hollowed out area to make room for the perineum. But from talking to others, that isn't always enough. You can get wider bike seats that don't have a nose on them and support your entire bottom much like a chair, taking the pressure off the perineum. If you're going to the gym to train, you might want to use a recumbent bike, again because it has a full support seat. Swimming is a form of cardio many enjoy. For me, it's a good workout because I'm trying the whole time not to drown. Not exactly the best swimmer. They studied people over 50 and found after 12 weeks of regular swimming, they had improvements in their vascular function, which really means blood flow, precisely what we're looking to improve. Now, if you want a full body cardiovascular workout like swimming and you don't want to drown, maybe try something on top of the water, like rowing. Most of the time we're using a rowing machine. This is a great way to improve blood flow to the entire body. If I were to pick a risk with rowing, it would be lower back pain. This is often caused by using poor form, leaning too far forward or back and not using your legs. A great way to improve blood flow to your lower body and pelvic area is by doing leg exercises. The advantage to single leg work is you can get a good workout in with less weight, making it easier on your lower back. To find the best single leg exercises for amazing sex, watch this video next and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.